Okay, so our lesson today is about statistics. I'll explain all the concepts of this lesson using this example. Here are the marks of my grade 9 students in a math exam. These marks are over 20. As you know, we're 18 students in grade 9. Their marks were as follows. 15 over 20, 12, 10, 8, 9, 12, and so on. These are 18 marks. Each mark corresponds to, a, to, a, to only one student. First of all, we must know what's the meaning of population. Population is the group on which the study is done. For, for example, in our example here, the population are the students of grade 9. After population, I'll introduce value or character. Value or character is the subject of the study. For example, in this example, I'm studying the marks of my students. So the character or the value is the marks. The character may have two natures. It may be either quantitative or qualitative. When I say quantitative, it may be given a number. For example, 15, 12, 10. This study, in this study, the character is quantitative. But sometimes the character is qualitative. When I say qualitative, yani I give it a quality. For example, good, bad, sunny, cloudy, um, Colors. snowy, and so on. Another term we, we will use in this chapter is frequency. Frequency is the number of appearances of each character. For example, the character 15 appears how many times? One, two. So I say the frequency of 15 is two. Let's consider 12. One, two, three, four. So I say the frequency of 12 is four. After that, we have total frequency. Total frequency is the total number of values or characters. For example, here the total frequency is 18. Since I have 18 values, I have relative frequency, which is equal frequency over total frequency. We have relative frequency in percent, which is equal to relative frequency times 100. And central angle, this central angle is used whenever we are asked to draw the circular diagram. It's equal to relative frequency times 360. Okay, now I'm going to construct a statistical table. Whenever you are asked to construct a, a statistical table, the first row must include the value or the character. What values do I have? I have value 15, 12, 10, 8, and so on. I arrange them in increasing order from the least value to the highest value. The least value here I have is 5. So I first put 5. After 5, I have 8. Then 9. Then 10. Then 12. 15, the last value is 18, and in the last one, I put total. After value, we always write the frequency. We said that the frequency is the number of each character or of each value. If we look at number 5, the value 5, how many times... Does the 5 appear? Only one time. So the frequency of 5 is 1. What about 8? How many times do we have 8? 1, 2, and 3. So the frequency of... And 4. So the frequency of 8 is 4. What about 9? 1, Two, only two. The frequency of nine is two. Ten. One, two, and three. The frequency of ten is three. Twelve. One, two, three, and four. The frequency of twelve is four. 
15 1 2 the frequency of 15 is 2 and 18 1 and 2 the frequency of 18 is 2 the total must be 1 2 3 4 5 must be 18 let's count the frequencies 1 plus 4 5 5 and 2 7 7 and 3 10 14 16 and 18 so I didn't skip any value after frequency let's calculate the relative frequency as we have said relative frequency is the frequency over total frequency which is what is the frequency of 5 1 over the total is 18 we can leave it as a fraction or as a decimal what is the relative frequency of 8 which is the frequency over total 4 over 18 here relative frequency of 9 is 2 over 18 which is the frequency over total frequency 3 over 18 4 over 18 2 over 18 2 over 18 the total relative frequency must be 1 which is 18 over 18 which is equal to 1 after relative frequency let's find relative frequency in percent relative frequency in percent as we have said is relative frequency times 100 which is 1 over 18 times 100 4 over 18 times 100 2 over 18 times 100 and always remember whenever you put your answer you have to put percent beside your answer 3 over 18 times 100 4 over 18 times 100 2 over 18 times 100 2 over 18 times 100 and the total is 18 over 18 times 100 which is 100 percent so the total relative frequency in percent is 100 percent now let's find the central angle as we have said central angle is relative frequency times 360 which is 1 over 18 times 360 this one is 20 degrees 4 over 18 times 360 which is 80 degrees 2 over 18 times 360 which is 40 degrees 3 over 18 times 360 which is 60 degrees 4 over 18 times 360 which is 80 degrees 2 over 18 times 360 which is 40 degrees this is also 40 degrees and the total central angle must be 360 degrees I'll add one thing which is increasing cumulative frequency what does it mean I drop the first frequency this is the first frequency I drop it the first frequency is one I write one I add this frequency with the next frequency so one plus four which is equal to five I add this number with the next frequency which is two five plus two is equal to seven seven plus three is equal to ten ten plus four is equal to fourteen fourteen plus two is equal to sixteen and sixteen plus two is equal to eighteen note that the last increasing cumulative frequency represents the total frequency ok 
Okay. We have something which is called average or mean. The symbol of average or mean is X bar. Average or mean is the summation of VI, FI. V means value and F means frequency. As we see here, each value has a frequency. Summation means plus. Yani as we are saying, V1 times F1 plus V2 times F2. V1 is value 1. F1, V2, F2. Plus V3, F3 until we reach the last value. For example here, the first value is 5. And its frequency is 1, so I write 5 times 1. Plus, the second value is 8, and its frequency is 4. I write 8 times 4. Plus, 9 times 2. Plus, 10 times 3. Plus, 12 times 4. Plus, 15 times 2. Plus, 18 times 2. I find this answer, and that, then I divide by total frequency, which is equal to 18. Here I get a number. This number must be between the least value and the highest value. This means that this number must be between 5 and 18. If your answer is less than 5 or more than 18, this means that you've got a wrong answer. Something also new, which is the bar graph or something which is called the polygon. What's the meaning of bar graph? Bar graph mean draw a graph using bars. Always and always, while we're drawing any graph in statistics on the horizontal axis, we must write the value. Our value here is the grades. What grades do we have? We have grade 5, grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, grade 12, grade 15, and grade 18. Note that on the horizontal axis, you don't need to take a scale, but it's necessary to take a scale along the y-axis. Now, what must we put on the y-axis? On the y-axis, always put what is required. For example, if you are asked to draw the bar graph of frequencies, so you have to write on the y-axis the frequencies. What frequencies do I have? One, four, two, three, four, and so on. So I write them in order. Zero, one, two, three, and four. I take a scale. Each box along the y-axis is one. Now, what is the frequency of the value five? The frequency of the value five is one. So this is the bar graph of value five. What is the frequency of eight? which is 4. The frequency of 8 is 4. The frequency of 9 is 2. That of 10 is 3. The frequency of 12 is also 4. That of 15 is 2. And the frequency of 18 is also This is the bar graph. But if you are asked to draw the polygon, you don't make bars. You just take a point. And join these points. This line is called polygon. And these bars represent the bar graph. So if you are asked to draw the bar graph, you're supposed to make bars. But if you are asked to draw the polygon, just take points and then join these points. The last thing I want to tell you today is how to draw a circular diagram or a pie chart. 
To draw a circular diagram, we need the central angle. Let's see here. The value of or the value of five or the angle of value five is twenty degrees. I draw a radius, and thus then using a protractor, take value twenty degrees. This is twenty. Approximately this one. This is 20 degrees. This 20 degrees corresponds to value 5. I write 5. Then for value 8, the angle is 80. I put the protractor on the line I've just drawn. And take 80 degrees. Here is 80. This 80 degrees corresponds to the value 8. So this one is value 8. Now the angle of value 9 is 40 degrees. Also, I put the protractor on the last segment I've drawn and take 40 degrees. Here is 40 degrees. So this 40 degrees corresponds to value 9. Now, the angle of value 10 is 60. Also, I continue from here. 60 degrees. This is 60 degrees. This 60 degrees corresponds to value 10. Then, for value 12, I have 80 degrees. This is 80 degrees for value 12. I still have values 15 and 18. The angle of value 15 is 40 degrees. Here is 40 degrees. This angle is for value 15. And this angle remain here must be also 40 degrees. And it's for value 18. Let's make sure it's 40 degrees. Okay, so it's 40 degrees. Thank you. I'm ready for any answer you need. For any question you need, sorry. <laughs>